Hi everyone, well welcome to Saw Adventures. We've got another video today and it's from the great town of Chinchilla. We're going to show you a bit of footage from around the town, the botanical gardens, we had a bit of fun there checking out the uh, big watermelon, also some other things we did there. Absolutely fantastic place. The reason I'm showing you this little bit at the start, I forgot to record footage at the start when I first got there, but that's why I'm showing you down here at the weir right now. Absolutely fantastic. Always wanted to check out the Chinchilla Weir. It's a fantastic place. We're actually staying at um, a great little uh, place we booked on Hip Camp. It's called uh, Ruben's Lagoon Campgrounds. Uh, you'll find it on Wiki Camps. I will leave a link in the description. But uh, what we'll do now is we'll head to the campground in a second and uh, we'll start off there. I'll do a bit of a walk around, show you all around the campgrounds, and then we'll come back and have a look at uh, this weir and everything, show you all that. Absolutely amazing. Now I just want to mention too, the weekend we were here was after that uh, horrible shooting of the uh, police officers there at Chinchilla. Absolutely um, horrible, but we still decided to go and um, honour our booking and support the town. So I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get into it. We're down at our campsite now. So we're going to have a quick look around and then we'll go for a bit of a walk around and show you around this wonderful little uh, park. Um, like I was saying there in the opening part, uh, you can find it on hip camp or you can just phone them. This is one of those hip camp places where they don't mind if you ring up and uh, make a booking, but you can book it on hip camp as well. So let's have a look at our campsite here, eh? They have powered sites here and they also have a bit of camping sites over in the back there without power. And there is some powered ones over in the bush there. You can camp up along the back there. Um, there's a big camp kitchen over there, but we'll just show you where we are here. So we're on a couple of powered sites. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't really expensive. I think it was only $5 extra a night for power um, on top of our fee, which I think was only around, it cost us $75 for me and Annie for three nights. So, and that was with power. I reckon that's bloody good. And, uh, Great little spot, I'll tell you. Um, like I said, just near Chinchilla, and it's not far. The main town's only two or three k's up the road there, and uh, absolutely fantastic. And it's a good little uh, base camp if you wanted to travel around the area. And Rome is not that far away, miles. Um, we're going to go for a drive out and show you out at uh, the Chinchilla Weir as well, and show you around there. So. I've actually got my car parked on uh, camp, oh, on camp. I've got my car parked on uh, Rob's driveway. Put it around there yesterday because we were cooking up on the camp cube last night. Cooked up some bloody beautiful pizzas. I might put a bit of uh, photo footage up there and show you that. But uh, Rob's got his uh, new caravan here. He's towed it out here from Brisbane. About three and a half hours drive for Rob from Brisbane and I'll tell you what, his new caravan is working out really great for him, he absolutely loves it. He's still got his dot trailer, uh, anyone that's wondering. He's um, not selling it yet. He just wants to feel out the caravan and he may still take his dot away when he's doing more sort of remote um, touring or something like that. And he's still got his Ford Ranger, still got his rooftop tent up on top of that as well. But he's just uh, changed the way that he wants to camp. He was had his air conditioner going in there all day yesterday. And uh, I'll tell you what, it was bloody quiet too. That was something we didn't talk about on the video I did on it. His actual air conditioner in that caravan is really quiet. Like we camped right, right next to him and you couldn't hear it. So make sure you check out my video on uh, Rob's uh, ice track camper or caravan. And uh, check out Rob's video as well, Australian Camping and Four Wheel Drives. And uh, have a look at that. But he's sitting out there having breakfast, so we won't di disturb him too much. He tells me he's having cereal, but he had a jam donut in his mouth there, or jam bloody lemmington in his mouth there a minute ago. A <laughs> jam, a jam <laughs> lemmington. <laughs> tells me he eats healthy and he's shoving bloody. Oh, yeah. And we've got um, our old dot 261 and uh, it was bloody windy here last night we just went to bed about 10 o'clock and uh, I didn't really hammer the pegs in that crash out on the other side and one of them blew out and the old just the fly that I have over me uh, awning 
flew up over the roof and uh, woke everyone up and uh, we come out and I, there was one of those ropes just running down there on that fly that we have. It wasn't the rooftop tent blowing away or anything like that. Rob was up, thought his horn blew over, but uh, no, it was all good. So you can see the little uh, camping spots here and uh, a few little caravanners pulling in here. So you, you virtually drive in the driveway down there and you can drive down here and there's a little roundabout there and then you come back up and you pull into your camping spot or you can come down the right hand road there and pull in this way so they've got power and water on all the sites um, and there's a beautiful little uh, lagoon over here or a little dam whatever you want to call it and uh, you can come down here there was people down here yesterday swimming in it and uh, Absolutely uh, wonderful. Nice little deck here they've put up here and uh, got some chairs and a little lounge and uh, you can jump in the water and I might put some photos up too. Um, they've got these little fairy lights running up all over the place. There's a heap down in the back there in the bush as well. And uh, there's free kayaks and boats and paddle boats and whatever you can come down here and throw in this little lagoon and have a bit of a paddle around and a bit of a play little rope swing over there there's tables and barbecues they got firewood over there they got all the gear here i'll tell you for a nice little and i tell you what it's nice and quiet so i don't know what it would be like if it was on peak season but uh you can see the amount of people here at the moment and uh it's been absolutely fantastic. They've got um, showers and toilets and a little laundry over there. You can uh, rubbish, throw your rubbish out, put your cans in there. We'll go over and have a look at the camp kitchen now and uh, show you over there. But uh, like I said, it's a great little park just to get away. We're going to go back into Chinchilla and uh, we're going to go find the big watermelon. So we might show you that, it's up near the Botanical Gardens. Um, I just might mention too, like this weekend here we're here, it's actually the weekend um, just after they've had that horrible uh, shooting just outside of Chinchilla here, where three people were maliciously killed, but uh, we just still decided to come out here and we had this booked ages before this all happened. and. Uh, we, we still thought, no, we're going to come out here and we're going to support the community. And uh, we went down to the memorial there yesterday, Rob and I, and we just stood there and had a few thoughts and uh, thinking of all the people in this town. So it's really important you know, to get out if you can and uh, come out to these rural communities and uh, just support these places. Because I tell you what, uh, Shelley, the lady that runs this park, she's absolutely lovely and uh, she's done a great job here. The owners have been here for 37 years and uh, I think they've done a great job. It's not overly big. Like I'll pan around now, it runs all the way down here. You've got all these parks here. Runs all the way around there and up the back there. But we're going to head over to the camp kitchen now and then we'll probably head into town and show you a few places and then we'll come back and finish off. Cheers guys. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. One other thing, guys, before I head over to the camp kitchen, not that I've been over there. Oh, we've been over there just washing up at night. It's really good. They've got hot water and that over there. But i uh, been testing out the new battery system. Um, make sure you check out my videos on that. But uh, I bought myself a coffee machine. I had a milk frother. I had it plugged into the car making the coffee. I will uh, might put a little bit of a video up on the screen there and show you that. But I tell you what, the new battery system is just awesome. It has been going fantastically. I actually um, turned my, went into town yesterday and we bought some ice cream. We're gonna cook up our buddy Terry's apple cobbler or peach and whatever apple cobbler thing tonight. And I uh, bought some ice cream, but my new 12 volt system there is absolutely running fantastically. I had the fridge set at uh, minus eight yesterday afternoon to keep the ice cream nice and cold. And it's only like 7.30 in the morning and the battery's 
at 93%. The sun's up now, it's putting four amps in. Um, so it hasn't hardly lost any power overnight. So that is just what I wanted. I wanted a system that works, something that I can keep an eye on and it is doing the job. Have a look around here, I'll show you the fridge. The fridge is cycling now, but I don't know whether you can read the screen there, it's on minus eight, and uh, that is absolutely keeping up with everything. So really impressed with the uh, new electrical system, with all the Renergy gear, absolutely fantastic. Thanks again to Phil from Phil's Camping and Touring. Amazing job, mate. So we will head over to that camp kitchen now and have a look around. Cheers, everyone. Okay, guys, here we are at the camp kitchen. Now, we were talking to the owner yesterday and he said, they actually moved this uh, camp kitchen from the old council uh, showground park. Uh, they didn't want it anymore. So they bought it and they moved it down here in one complete unit. Uh, they put big steel beams underneath it and uh, had it on the back of a uh, removalist sort of trucking mob and they moved it down into the park here in one piece. Admittedly, it's only probably one and a half k's down the road, so it didn't have far to travel, but it looks absolutely amazing. Like, look at this beautiful old big table out the front here. And then you've got a little, uh, another little table here with bar stools. And inside, there's just a multitude of stuff that you can use. Um, gas barbecues, there's sinks. They provide tea towels, um, washing up liquid, stuff to wash up, uh, you just got to make sure you keep it nice and tidy. Kettles, toasters, all the usual stuff. Little, um, what do you call them, air fryer type bloody uh, cookers, hot plates, fridges. Rob come down here the other night, he got here late and uh, he had a little microwave meal he wanted to do. And I said to him, let's go over to the camp kitchen and uh, 7.30 at night, just walked over here, turned the microwave on and uh, cooked up his meal. Big TV up there if you want it. Look at the big sign, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Really getting into the spirit. Um, nice big tables in here, lots of chairs. Gas things for when it's during winter. So if you come in here at night, just if anyone's camping here, they're the light switches to turn on the lights in here. They don't, they're not on any time or anything, so just make sure you turn them off when you're finished. But, Beautiful and cool in here. During the day we come over here, they've got all sarkic and stuff up in the roof there. Keep you nice and cool, but uh, absolutely fantastic. And you've got a great view out there of the park. You can come over here, sit down, relax, and uh, have a couple of drinks and uh, just chill out. But uh, we're gonna go into town now and uh, we'll probably have a look, see if we can find this big watermelon. Maybe show you a few sites in there in Chinchilla and uh, then we might head out of town and go down and show you uh, the weir, the chinchilla weir, and then we'll uh, probably come back and finish off. So if you've got any um, questions or comments or anything like that, uh, just put them down below. I hope you enjoy these little um, insights in there, a few little camping spots. Um, I hope it helps you out, like if you're traveling. Like I, I keep saying, like hip camp and uh, wiki camps and all those sort of things. Hip camp's a real favourite. This is a hip camp spot, but um, the owners did say to me they don't care. I mean, hip camp does take a percentage out of the booking fee. So if you ring up and book it, and we just did a bank transfer when we got here. We just, um, Shelley just gave us their bank account details and she was really good about it. She said, I'll oh, just put it in once you get set up. So absolutely fantastic, um, really friendly, really great spot. So we're going to jump in the FJ and uh, head into Chinchilla. Cheers, everyone. Hey, guys. Well, we've made it down to the Chinchilla Botanic Gardens. So there's the sign. It's looking pretty good. We're going to go for a bit of a walk around. If we show you stuff that's interesting, uh, we'll have a look at it. We're going to try and find the big watermelon and have a bit of a look at the parklands here. It looks really beautiful from the road. So McDonald's is just over the road over there. If any points over there somewhere where I'm pointing, you might be able to see the Macca sign, Woolies Fuel Station. It's easy to find, just Google it. Uh, we're gonna go in and have a look around. Cheers, everyone. Okay. okay, we've just walked from where we were over there. You come to the welcome to the parkland sign. 
I won't go through it all, you can read it. There's heaps of stuff here. We found our big watermelon up here in the corner. So we are here, we've got to get over there. So we're going to go look for that. We're going to show you the big watermelon. So that's what uh, Chinchilla is uh, known for. So let's head in here and have a look around. Let's walk down a little bit further. Got a little pavilion there, probably have theatres and stuff, seating out here. We're not going to go up there because there's a lot of kids playing. I don't like recording stuff around where there's kids. Um, but up there, there's a little wetlands area you can play. There's toilets, undercover sort of stuff because it does get really hot here. It is absolutely set out really beautiful. I know Kingaroy Council is uh, looking at doing something like this as well. So absolutely beautiful, all the old trees and everything like that. So it looks fantastic. We're going to head over here. Hey guys, well, we found it, the big watermelon. Have a look at this. You'll find this when you're coming into Chinchilla, probably from Dolby, but uh, it's right on the main road. Uh, it's not far from the Botanical Gardens. We just had to walk over from there. Like I showed you down on the map there, you'll be able to find it. Have a look at the size of this compared to me. You take a big bite out of it. But um, great little bit of um, memorabilia if you're into chasing up big things, big oysters and big prawns and big bananas and all that sort of thing. We've got the big watermelon. So, we might show you a little bit more if we're walking back and now then we'll head back to camp and we'll finish off. Cheers everyone. We've just walked up to the other part of the park as well before we And uh, here's another entrance up here, Chinchilla Botanic Gardens. And uh, look at the beautiful big old Christmas tree they put up. How cool is that? They've got Christmas lights over there too, but like I said, I'm not gonna go over that part because there's all kids over there playing. And over on the corner here, I'm not sure when it opens, but they've got a uh, historical museum Okay, we've walked over down the path here and you can see over in there, I'll just hold the camera up. You can see a lot of old machinery and uh, old trucks and a couple of old railway bogies. Looks like they've got a, like a little uh, railway carriage that they can run around there on small gauge track. So this would be really nice to come and have a look at working too. So we're gonna keep making our way around here and back down towards the main part of the road there and see if we can Cheers everyone. Like I said, uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. It really does help my channel out and um, promotes it. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll show you some more. Cheers. Hey guys, Steve here. I'll just show you this before I stop. A couple of FJs, how cool is that? So, so here we are. Chinchilla Weir, it's about eight k's out of Chinchilla, which is that way. And uh, it's just down there. I'm gonna go up and show you up uh, the top part of the park there first, and then we'll come down and have a look at the bottom part there. But I thought I'll just show you the sign you're looking for. It's right on the uh, George Gray Bridge. If you go over the George Gray Bridge, going out of Chinchilla, you've gone too far. So there it is there, Chinchilla Weir. We'll head back down there and have a look, eh? Cheers, everyone. Okay guys, we've made it down to the um, sort of car park section where the boat ramp is down at the Chinchilla Weir. Uh, we've drove up from the main area where you come in there, where we showed you the sign. And uh, you come down here and they've got little uh, boat parking spots, little tables, little viewing places. And uh, just got a bit of a plaque there where you can read about when it was all done. But absolutely beautiful little spot. And there's another bonus up there I'll show you in a minute because it's absolutely fantastic what the council has done here. Have a look at that little waterway there. How beautiful is that? And a guy's just gone out on his boat. Probably going to go out and try his luck at fishing. But uh, beautiful little uh, river here. Any and Winnie are making their way over. Winnie wants to see what's happening. We'll go for a bit of a walk back up here and uh, I'll show you up here and show you what you can do here. There's a little um, jetty there, tie your boats up or uh, throw a line in. So great little spot if you're staying where we are down at Rubens Lagoon and you've got a boat and you want to come up here or there's another great bonus down here if you're traveling through town and you need a quick spot to stop at night. So we'll head down there now. There is um, toilets over on the uh, right of us there and uh, more tables and that here and uh, some barbecues as well. So 
got it set out really nice it all looks pretty new too like it's and i can't see any graffiti so it's really well looked after so but we're going to head over here now over there is your um toilets and that and i'm not sure i'll uh, go over and see if it does say showers if it does i'll put it up on the screen but uh over here look at this they have actually put in little camping spots now i think it's a donation thing and uh, they've got powered sites here as well there's a communal uh, fire pit but you can come down here and uh, stop off and go camping how bloody awesome is that they've got uh, unpowered ones here as well over here you can see little fire pits there's no power on these ones but there's little powered sites all up there absolutely fantastic and there's little camping spots right down here beside the water as well we'll go over and have a look and uh, then we'll show you a little bit more imagine camping down right down here I mean I could come down here and camp here I reckon if I knew it was here I probably would have just come book two nights in the other place and spent the last night down here how good is this little fire pit there and look at the view you got just throw a line out there and enjoy the water bloody awesome we'll go for a bit of a walk up here and see what else we can see yeah, as you can see, I've walked up a little bit further. They've got rubbish bins here. Um, that is probably one of the most important things with a place like this. Bloody make sure you leave it clean. And I cannot see any rubbish line around here. So people are, because if you don't, these sort of places will not exist. They just won't put them up. Yeah, you can see here, you just come in and uh, probably hook up your power. It doesn't look like they've got power on them all. Oh yeah, there we go. So one single power point and uh, you can hook into 240, how good's that? So we're gonna head over back down the road now and go down and show you the weir. Then we'll finish off, eh? Cheers everyone. Okay guys, we've come back down to where the weir is. Pulled up just up here because I thought I'll show you this thing over here first. So what is it? Looks like a great big old valve for a um, water line or something probably had big pipes coming into it and uh, there's a big screw thing up there that probably screws up that centerpiece lifts it up lets the water flow through bloody awesome takes some bloody force to bloody move that eh? look at the name john my father's name so john iron but uh here we are here there's the uh gregory gray bridge over there and uh over here is the chinchilla weir What's it look like any? Looks pretty good, the old water's flowing over it. Uh, we'll go up here and have a quick look, eh? Had a few floods out here this year and uh, I bet you it was a bit of an awesome sight being out here when the floods were going over this. It would have been good coming out here and uh, checking it out, but uh, you can probably hear the water. And you can probably see it now, so nice breeze coming up off here, but you can't swim anywhere down here. Not going to worry about walking up there. I'll show you a bit of footage from up there. But uh, you can see the water running down through the middle there. I think it's about 13 metres deep at the centre there. And uh, water runs down there and then flows under that bridge down there. So camping area is way over in the distance there. I forgot to mention that. That's where we were just a minute ago. But uh, we're going to head back to our camp now and uh, we'll probably sign off. So cheers, everyone. Hope you've enjoyed. So thanks very much for watching and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, everyone, we're back at our campsite now. Hope you've enjoyed that little tour around uh, Chinchilla, the Botanical Gardens, the Big Watermelon, down at Chinchilla Weir. We're back at Rubens Lagoon. Um, we're going to sit down now and have a few drinks, have a few nibblies. Rob's going to set up his Starlink because we're thinking about doing a live feed tonight. So hopefully that works out. You'll probably see it before this. So thanks very much for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure you check out um, Rob's channel too, Australian Camping and Four Wheel Drives. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. So I'll play a little bit of footage and... Uh, Put a few photos up at the end of around the campsite here, eh? 
Cheers, everyone. See you on the next one. And don't forget, make your own path, stay safe, look after each other. Bye.